Hello everyone, it's JojiAct56 and welcome to part 3 of this Toadstool64 tutorial series. In this part I'm going to show you the basics of Toadstool64, how the interface works and all of that good stuff. So let's get directly into it. So if you open up Toadstool64 it will greet you with this screen. And the clue here is not to wait for a long while because that will take you forever. What you need to do is click on the screen and it will load up. Then it will ask you to load up your ROM. And remember from the last part, we saved it in the root of the Super Mario 64 ROM hacking tools folder we created. So just navigate to that folder. In my case it is in my downloads folder, right here you can see the folder Super Mario 64 ROM hacking tools we created last time and there you see my extended Super Mario 64 ROM. You can tell if it is an extended ROM by this EXT prefix for the Z64 and if everything went well you should be able to open that up with Toadstool 64. And this will take a little bit because Toadstool64 is going to load the wall ROM in and on some computers this will go very fast and on some computers it might be a little slower. So this is the basic interface and let me make this a little bigger for you guys so you can see it. In this main screen here we have the level. On the left we have some boxes, those can be used to modify some objects. On the top we have more uh, customization boxes where we can modify a uh, object's uh, position and all of that good stuff. These buttons are to move and rotate objects, you can change the background, all of that good stuff. I'm going to get into that in a second. This top bar is really important. Here you can open up another ROM, so this is used to uh, switch ROMs basically. Save is also really important, Toadstool64 doesn't auto save. Uh, if you have any changes, this save button will get a different color. So let me just demonstrate a really simple change here. I'm going to move the uh, start warp, but we'll get onto that in another tutorial. There, as you can see, the start warp moved and the save button got a different color. So this indicates that there are unsaved changes and you should save your ROM. The next button is launch ROM. It might launch the ROM if you click this. Sometimes it don't work. So uh, it's better to just open Project 64 and just launch it from there. I recommend not to use launch ROM if you're using uh, Windows 10. Alright, moving on. Here you have edit textures and this is where I talked about previously. Uh, this, these are all the textures you can add it with Toadstool64. If you want to add, for example, the star icon on the top to the uh, left of how many stars you have, you can do that right here. You need to have a separate program for that and we'll cover that later on in this series. So we'll go back to the level editor. Also right here on the top, if you click this little arrow, you get a list of courses you can edit. If you just click another course, you can just switch to that course and edit that course you just clicked. As you can see, that just worked. Let me just stick to uh, Castle Grounds just for demonstration. All right, back we are at Castle Grounds. And as I said in the first episode, you can't add objects, but you need to work with existing objects. So we will begin with changing some objects around, right? So first of all, how do you move the camera? You can basically look around by just clicking in this course right here and holding your mouse button and dragging it to the left will make it go to the left. And if you drag your mouse to the right, it will go to the right. If you drag it down, it will go down and up for up, really straight forward. You can use your mouse wheel and some people might not have a mouse wheel. You can have a problem then. So I recommend you to have a mouse for that. Uh, if you're using a laptop I recommend you to get a USB mouse. So if you hold shift and you drag to the left you will go to the right. 
And if you drag to the right, you will go to the left. All everything is basically reversed. So if you drag up, you will go down and down goes up. So that are the basic camera movement controls. So let's zoom in here a little bit. And you see these red outlines basically means that they are a 3D uh, object. As you can see here, these are the color codes for all the objects. To select an object, right click on the object and you will see that it will get a yellow highlight as you can see here. And sometimes objects looks a look a little weird, but not in this case, because we can actually see that it's butterfly. But in this case, we can't really see it because it's stuck in the ground for some reason. So then what you have to do is look on to the left. The object in this list will also be yellow highlighted. So if I wanted to, for some reason, select the this specific butterfly, I can also do that by clicking on here. So then it will tell you where it is in the map if you happen to find it basically. But normally you don't need to do that. You can just right click on a specific object. Now let's say we want to replace this object, this butterfly with something else. And now here's the trick. Don't click in here because this is for selecting objects. Click in here where you want to replace this object with. And there's a low, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, scrolling in here doesn't really work because uh, it will zoom in. So I recommend you just drag with this uh, little square thingy. So for example, let's just go for an exclamation box. And also you can see that this box is really big and the exclamation block is really small. Toso 64 doesn't really show a good preview of the items. So, but we can basically see due to the outline that it is sunken in the ground. So how do we move it up? Well, right here. Now grab this little thing and move it up. Just drag up and then it will move up basically. And we'll zoom a bit out. And this is a bit of guesswork. So I don't know if this is too high or too low. We'll just see if it is good. So after recording this video, I realized that there is actually in fact a way to position these exclamation boxes properly so Mario can hit them perfectly. So how you can do this is really easy. First of all, just right, select your exclamation block, then drop it to the ground. And then here, down here by the Y coordinate, just add about 300. I think 300 does the job pretty well. Sometimes you need a little less and sometimes a few more. Now don't hit enter, but instead just click anywhere else and it will position itself perfectly. Now let's take a look how that looks in game. All right, there you can see our explanation box is at perfect height and we can just jump at it without any problems at all. So yeah, that's how you do that. And with this one, you can go and drag it to the left. We'll make it go to the left and to the right, it will go to the right. Same thing, it's not reversed. So let's just put it over here, for example. Also, if you for some reason wanted to drop it to the ground, you can click this button right here, drop to ground, ploof, and then it is on the ground. If you want to keep it on the ground, just keep it on the ground, click that, and then you can move it and it will always be on the ground no matter where you move it. But I don't want to keep it on the ground, I want to levitate it a bit up in the air. And now we can also set the content of the uh, explanation box. This is basically a sort of attribute to the item here. Click this little list thingy next to the name. Now it contains a wing cap and we want to change that. So click this thing and this box where you previously selected the item you wanted to change another item into will change into set B parameter. Don't worry about that. Just choose what you want to get out of there. And I'm just going to go with Koopa Shell. All right. And now to get back to the object selecting window we got here before, just click this object combo little thingy here. This is the name of the item, which is an explanation box. So just click that and you get your object combo window back where you can change it into another object, which, which I'm not going to do. If you right click a tree, you will see that it is a special 3D object and you can basically, you see that you can't really change it into anything else. If you wanted to move a tree, of course you can just right click it and 
use this little pad, whatever you want to call it, just to move it around. And you can see the shadow doesn't move with it, but you can do whatever you want with it. You can uh, make it go higher. Like, for example, if I wanted a floating tree, you can do that. You cannot rotate it though. What you can do is select another 3D object, which is the door, and you can use its warps, but you can also set its key here. If you ever want to do that for some reason, you can set it to about the one key you need it. Also, what we can do here is change this to a metal door. So let's just go do that for both. So right click to select it. Then go over to special pre preset here. Just click that once and then it will uh, go with your set special preset and then it will allow you to change it into a different type of door. And now we have metal doors. And make sure to set it here to unlocked because otherwise you can't enter the castle. One last thing, if I wanted to, it to be night at the castle grounds, I can set the background to black by clicking this little black color right here and it will make it black. If you ever want the default clouds back, just click this black here and it will alternate between the default background and the cloud uh, and the black background. So I'm just gonna leave that like that. Here you can set the drag speed of uh, objects. So if you want to drag objects faster, just position it really fast, you can do this. Set that higher. So if you, now it goes really slow. So if you want very precise movements, you can set it really slow. If you want very long distance covered, you can just do it like this. And yeah, I'm going to just going to move it right over here. There, floating tree. If you right click on a sign, it looks like you can change the message right here by double clicking it, but in fact you can't, because if I just replace this and press enter, it will eventually just replace it with the default text. So you need the Super Mario 64 text editor for this. So you can't do it with Toadstool 64 itself. Then we have these buttons right here, and they basically uh, are camera controls. So if you wanted to view the front of a level, you can do that with this button here, the back, the top, and you can just use the uh, the scroll wheel to go higher and go lower, the bottom, the left, and uh, like everything. Uh, fly is the default one, so you can just fly freely, and that's what I like the best actually. And orbit is it basically orbits around the selected uh, item or the object, I should say. So if you move the camera around, it will orbit around that selected object, as you can see right here. And there is also this reset cam right here, which will reset it to the default position. Also, these buttons right here will make it go from 2D to 3D view. All right, then the last bit of this tutorial right here is music because you can set the music to a different track in Toastal 64 itself. So if I wanted to replace the Castle Ground music, well, there isn't any music, but if I wanted to add music over there, uh, you just click this here, Area Music Track, and you can see the current one is no music. For example, I'm going to set it to the metal cap. You can see right here, it is set to the metal cap. Now, this is all I'm going to cover in this part today. I'm going to show you in game what we've done so far and uh, then we'll say goodbye for this part. All right, here we are guys. As you can see, the music is playing, the metal music, and you can hear the butterflies though still. And here you can see our box is a little too high, but I think we can hit it if we... Yeah, there we go. So there we got our shell. And as you can see, the tree is still floating as well. So that's what, what we did. And also we changed the doors into metal doors. And as you can see, we can just enter the castle just fine. Only the warp is a little bit screwed up, but we uh, could fix that if we're really desperate. But it was just for demonstration purposes. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, leave a like if you found this helpful and you enjoyed it. 
and then I will see you guys in part 4 where we are going to edit some textures and edit some text as well. So I see you then, bye bye!